It's uniquely looking, uses unique circuits, uses two 9038 chips and has I2 as inputs. Quite distinctive for the Headstrong Company Nupra. The AMG DAC is part of the AMG line of products that comprises of a preamp, a stereo class D power amp, a mono class D power amp and a headphone amp. Of course all in matching design so it can form a nice compact stack. Here on review is only the DAC. Let's see how to use it. The AMG DAC is to be connected to an amplifier with loudspeakers connected or active speakers over either RCA or XLR cables. If you want to play music directly from a computer or laptop, it can be connected over USB, SPDIF or I2S depending on the connections on the computer. USB is the most common connection. The computer then can also provide internet radio if it is connected over a network cable or Wi-Fi to your router and from there to the internet. If you don't want the computer in the living or listening room, it can be placed elsewhere in the house connected to the home network. A streamer also connected to the home network can provide the music feed over a digital connection to the AMG DAC. That connection can be SPDIF, TOSLINK or I2S. A CD player, TV or game console can be connected over either SPDIF or TOSLINK. Alternatively, a TV or for instance a tuner can be connected to the stereo analog inputs. A streamer is usually controlled over an app on a smartphone or tablet, while the AMG DAC comes with an infrared remote control. The grey metal housing looks better in real life than on the photo. It has a retro look with LEDs seeping through the front, not showing when off. It measures 235 by 300 by 55 mm and weighs 2.5 kilos. On the front left the input selector. The selected input appears on the display using a single character and a number. C1 is coax aka SPDIF, O2 is optical, U3 is USB and so on. Pressing the input selector for 3 seconds switches the AMG DAC on or off. The stealth display shows the volume settings in 99 steps. Then two toggle switches, one that can double the output level from 2 to 4 volts on the RCAs or 4 to 8 volts on the XLRs. The second switch lets you bypass the volume control. The volume control doubles as a mute switch when pressed. On the rear we see the power switch in the IC mains inlet. Then the analog outputs, balanced on XLR and single ended on RCA. Next the inputs, first a pair of analog line inputs, followed by the digital inputs, I2S on HDMI, USB on USB 2B, SPDIF on RCA and optical on TOSLINK. Then the expansion port that looks like a USB connector but is only suited for an optional new prime Bluetooth or Wi-Fi extender. Last but not least a trigger output that can switch on or off connected gear like power amps. The AMG DAC has a linear power supply. To begin with a toroidal transformer that sends 18 volts AC to the rectifiers for the analog audio and 7 volts to the rectifiers for the digital circuits. These circuits are situated here. The USB interfacing on this little circuit board is done by an XMOS chip, while beneath it the interfacing for other inputs takes place. There we find the New Prime upsampling chip, they co-developed with the chip fender. New Prime states that it upsamples the signal to megahertz. This way they bypass the upsampling in the DAC chips that are situated here. Two ESS 9038Q2Ms, one per channel, placed very close to the clock crystal. From there the analog signal is sent to the circuits that convert the current coming from the DAC chips to voltage. Again New Prime's own Muse chips are used, this time the Muse's 8820s. 
These are followed up by, again, New Prime's analog volume control, the Muses 72320 chip. This is a thin film switched resistor ladder network. The output stage, situated here, does the voltage amplification and is completely discrete. Operating the AMD DAC is rather simple, as soon as you know it has to be switched on by pressing the left rotary encoder for 3 seconds, or press the power button on the supplied remote control of course. Turning that same knob lets you select inputs. The critical way the input name is displayed is easy to get used to. That is in fact a SPDIF input with 5 volts DC and thus not a USB bus could not be tested since no Wi-Fi or Bluetooth module was available. High gain, as can be said with one of the toggle switches, makes it possible to use the AMG DAC as preamp, directly driving even low sensitive power amps. The maximum PCM sampling frequency is 384 kHz on all inputs save the optical and the extension port. For DSD the speed of input is limited to DSD 128 over DOP, the optical input to DSD 64 over DOP. I2S supports up to DSD 256 data streams. USB on Windows computers support native DSD 256 while Macs and Linux computers do DSD 128 over DOP. Some might appreciate the analog inputs. It might be important to know that the signal is not digitized. It stays in the analog domain. But remember it's line level. To connect a turntable you need an RIAA pre preamp. The review sample was set to 230 volts or 210 to 250 volts AC as the manual states. At the bottom this can be switched to 90 to 130 volts AC. I did my listening test on my reference setup 1 where the Air Acoustics AX520 amplifier drives the PMC FAC12 signature loudspeakers on Isoacoustics Gaia 2 feet, connected over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. The digital source is the Grim Audio Mu1, of which the upsampling and 3dB headroom attenuation is switched off. The connection to the AMG DAC is made over professional BNC video cable with 75 ohm adapter plugs to RCA. It is connected to the SOTM SNH 10G network switch over network acoustics muon ethernet cable. All is placed in a Creative Trend 3 rack. The AMG DAC produces a royal stereo image with stable and rather focused imaging. The lows have good texture and go reasonably deep. Resolution and microdynamics as as you might expect of the better DACs in this price category, while sibilance is above average. That places the AMG DAC in the top of my reference set of 1B. See the links for more information on my references. At 2395 euros this DAC and preamp is nicely priced. New Prime are original thinkers. I use the term headstrong in the introduction in the most positive way. When a manufacturer states that they have developed a component in conjunction with an OEM manufacturer, it often means no more than batch engineering. A new prime upsampling chip most likely isn't batch engineered, as in sticking your name on a commonly available component. The new prime upsampling does not have a common fingerprint. It's not perfect. It can't be for this money, but the compromises are cleverly chosen. They are where the artifacts are the least noticeable. The analog circuitry is also of impressive design with its own IV conversion and discreetly built output circuit. It all proves the love for good sound, which is a good line to end this video with. I'll be back next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially, especially in these times. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. 
If that makes you feel like supporting my work too. The links are in the comments below this video in YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.